Hi, this is uh, Mrs. La Barbara. This is AP Physics Chapter Seven: Potential Energy and Generation Video One. Today's topic is gravitational potential energy. The objectives are to know the definition of kinetic potential, gravitational potential, and the mechanical energy. To know that gravitational potential energy is relative, and it is a shared property between Earth and object. To understand the relationship between work done by gravity and the gravitational potential energy and also to understand the relationship between work done on object and objects changing total mechanical energy. Be able to apply work energy relationship to solve problems. Here are the definition of kinetic potential, gravitational potential, and mechanical energy. So kinetic is associated with motion, K equals one half mv squared. Potential is associated with position, it's a stored energy. Gravitational potential, is associated with weight and height. So U equals mgh. We use U now. We don't use um, P, PE. Okay. So the sum of potential and kinetic is called total mechanical. That's K plus U. Work done by gravity and the gravitational potential energy. So as a body moves downward, work done by gravity equals mg times the displacement, the change in position, y1 minus y2. So this quantity, mgy, is called the gravitational potential energy. So we rewrite that equation that equals u gravitational at 1 minus u gravitational at 2. So that is a negative change in gravitational potential energy. So as you can see, when an object moves downward, uh, work done by gravity is positive. So as a result, its gravitational potential energy decreases. So that's why this negative is essential. This relationship also works if the body is moving upward. When the body moves upward, work done by gravity is neg negative. W is negative. As a result, its potential energy increases. Conservation of mechanical energy. So according to work, work energy theorem, total work done equals change in kinetic energy. We also know because the only gravity is doing work, so the work done Total work is work done by gravity, which equals negative change of gravitational potential energy. We set two equals to each other. What we get is this total mechanical energy is a constant. So this total added together, potential plus um, kinetic equals total mechanical. That is constant. As you can see, as this uh, long jumper goes into the air, the total mechanical energy is constant. As you move up, K decreases, U increases. E is the same. As you move down, K increases, U decreases. So again, E doesn't change. One thing you need to know is gravitational potential energy is relative. You can set any point as a zero point. Also, gravitational potential energy is a shared property between Earth and the object. That means without Earth, the object will have no potential energy. Let's take a look at the first example. You throw a ball straight up, giving it initial upward velocity. Find how high it goes. Ignore air resistance. Since the only force acting on the ball is gravity, so total mechanical energy is constant. So here is 0 0.1, 2, 0.2. Total mechanical energy is constant. So you substitute V1, Y1. V1 is 20, Y1 is 0. V2 is 0, we're trying to find Y2, substitute everything, Y2 equals 20.4. Now, forces other than gravity doing work. So work other, this is work kinetic energy theorem. Total work done equals change in kinetic energy. Rearranging uh, gravity force, do the work equals MGY1 minus MGY2, substitute that. You get work done by the other equals to total mechanical energy at 2 minus total mechanical energy at 1. So in this equation, E is total mechanical energy. So work done, if work done by the other is positive, total mechanical energy increase. If work done by the other is negative, total mechanical energy decrease. In special case, when the work done by the other is 0, E is constant. Let's take a look at this example. So uh, suppose the ball before it leaves your hand, you do work on it. Your hand moves the ball while you are throwing the ball uh, m equals 0.145 kilograms, which leaves your hand with upward velocity. 
ignore air resistance. Assume that your hand exerts a constant force. Find that force. So this is work done by the other. Work done by the other equals the change in total uh, mechanical energy. So substitute all the numbers. Y1, V1, Y2, V2, and you know the M, you have the force, 59 Newtons. Find the speed of the ball at uh, 50 meters high. So when the ball is out of your hand, total mechanical energy is conserved. So one half m uh, v2 squared plus mg y2 equals to one half m v3 squared plus mg y3. Here is position two. Here is position three. Substitute everything in. You have v3 equals positive negative 10 meters per second. This positive negative means it can move up or down at that point. Work and energy on a curved path. So uh, suppose this object is moving along the work done uh, along a curved path. The work done by gravitational force depends only on the vertical component because we can, to find work done by gravitational force along a curved path, we divide a path into a small segment delta s. The work done by the gravitational force over this segment is a scalar product of the force and the displacement. So in terms of unit vectors, the force is W negative mgj. Right? The displacement delta S equals X component plus Y component. So the work done equals the dot product and gives you negative mg delta Y. That means the work done by gravitational force depends only on the vertical component of displacement. So even the path is a curve, the total work done only on the difference in the height. Let's take a look at this example. The batter hits two identical baseball with the same initial speed and height, but a different initial angle prove that at a given height h, both balls have the same speed if the air resistance can be ignored. So since the only force is gravity and work done by gravity along the curve of the path only depends on the height, this means the work done by gravity is the same for both balls because they both reach the same height. So the work equals to k2 minus k1. Right? The work done is the same. Since both balls have the same initial k1, so their k2 must be the same. And therefore, k equals 1 half mv squared, so their v must be the same since they have the same mass. Another example, calculate speed along a curved path. So Thraki skateboards down a curved ramp. If we treat Thraki and his skateboard as a particle, he moves through a quarter circle with radius r equals to 3 meters. The total mass of Thraki and his skateboard is 25 kilograms. He starts from rest and there is no friction. Find his speed at the bottom of the ramp. Since there is no friction, the only force do the work is W. Uh, normal force doesn't do any work. So we can use conservation of energy, total mechanical energy. So we know y1 is 3, v1 equals 0, y2 is 0, trying to solve for v2, plug everything in, you'll have v2 equals to square root of 2gr equals 7.67 meters per second. Find a normal force that acts on him at the bottom of the curve. Let's take a look. At the bottom of the curve, v2 equals 2gr. So a red equals v squared over r, so you substitute v2 in, you get 2g. So the net force, the net force equals to the normal force minus gravity, and that equals ma red. That equals to 2mg solving for fn. Fn equals to 3mg equals to 735 newtons. Another example in the Previous example, suppose the ramp is not frictionless, that Thraki's speed at the bottom is only 6 meters per second. What work was done by friction acting on him? So here is the situation. Y1 is 3, V1 equals 0, Y2 equals 0, V2 is only 6. What is the work done by friction? Work done by friction equals to change in the mechanical energy. So you can sub substitute everything in. Again, this M is 25 kilograms. So you have work done by friction equals to negative 285 joules. So work done by friction is negative. That's why its total mechanical energy has decreased. Over here has less energy than over there. Another example. 
we want to load a 12 um, kilogram crate into a truck by sliding it up a ramp of 2.5 meter long inclined at 30 degrees a work giving no thought of friction calculate that he can get crate up the ramp by giving it an initial speed of 5 meters per second at the bottom and let it go but friction is not like negligible the crate slides 1.6 meters up the ramp stops then slides back down assuming the frictional force acting on the crate is constant find its magnitude so now you'll have work done by other so work done by other is friction force friction and and the displacement are, has 180 degrees so the work done by friction is negative ff times d that equals to uh, mechanical energy at 0.2 minus mechanical energy at 0.1 this is 0.1's position and velocity 0.2's position and velocity substitute everything in you have this is your d d equals 1.6 you have ff equals 35 newtons question two how fast is the crate moving when it reaches the bottom of the ramp so here is you are trying to find from 0.2 to 0.3 what is the v3 equals to so 0.2's uh perimeters and 0.3 perimeters and again you'll have ff already and you'll have the same d 1.6 so in this case you're trying to find what v3 equals to you substitute everything in you'll have v3 equals to 2.5 meters per second test your understanding so the figure shows two different frictionless ramps the height y1 and y2 are the same for both ramps if a, a block of m mass m is released from rest at the left hand end of the ramp what, which block will arrive to the right hand with a greater speed since in this case it's frictionless so the only work uh, is done by gravity so total mechanical energy is conserved since k1 u1 and u2 are the same for both blocks k2 must be the same and therefore v2 must be the same so they must have the same speed at the end next question says which block will arrive at right hand first well to see which hand which block goes first you have to see which one will have greater average speed so since block one you'll have a bigger drop so block one has a greater average speed than block two therefore block one will reach to the end first that's it for today thanks for watching see you next time